Hello, welcome to another video by LSX Engines Tuning and Marine. This video is sort of a special topics video. It's a side video from a longer video that I wanted to do separate because I didn't want to tie up space on the other video. But um, I had a, I'm having a hard problem getting this engine to start. Um, I verified that I have spark both at the coil tower, uh, the coil plug here, excuse me, the coil plug wire, and also I have a spark down here at number one. It's a little bit weak, but I have a spark. So I still couldn't get the engine to fire up uh, to really, like, it popped a little bit, but it wouldn't really run like it should, stay running a little bit. Um, even when you pour gas in the carburetor, it should run for a second or two. Fire up and run a second or two and then shut down, and it wouldn't do that. It just had a very faint pop, and it wouldn't really fire up. So um, got to think of what in the world could be wrong with it, and uh, started thinking along the lines of, uh, well, I've got good spark, so you need spark and gas. I've got fresh gas. As soon as I started to, said the word fresh gas, I really, you know what, wait a minute, I don't know the condition of this gas that well. So um, it's my separate tank. Um, I mean, it's a tank that I have, I usually use this tank to suck uh, transmission fluids and oils out of engines with vacuum. Um, the, that hose goes to the bottom of the tank. It's got a bulkhead fitting on it. And I use that tank, like say for, I put vacuum to the, the uh, opening there and it sucks uh, oils and fuels and stuff into there as a reservoir. Um, so this gas is not that old. I think it was about a month old, maybe, which I was, you know, I consider that relatively fresh. It should start on that. But I remember about a week ago, um, I drained a lawnmower at home and I drained it into this tank and I completely forgot about that. And so I guess the mixture of, uh, it only had a maybe a little bit less than a gallon in there to start with. And then when I drained another half a gallon or whatever it was into there, um, it must have, uh, it must have tainted this gas and made it uh, bad gas or something. So anyway, this uh, I had bad gas. And um, so as I went and got rid of this gas, the old gas, and put fresh gas in here, poured fresh gas in this carburetor, well, you know, it popped right up. It fired up and tried to run. So that was the problem. Um, but before I did that, I want to explain something else I did that was uh, probably help, help you. Um, it, before I did this, what I'm about to show you, it wouldn't even pop. It, would, it didn't do anything. It would just kind of free wheel and not pop at all, even with the bad gas. At least with the bad gas, it did pop a little bit when I, well, after I kind of did this little trick. So anytime, bottom line is anytime you're cranking an engine, uh, I was running off this battery here. This is a fresh battery. It's my battery, my personal battery I use for diagnosing uh, engines. Um, and I know it's fully charged and fresh. Um, anytime you're cranking an engine, the 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 load the starter is the biggest load on a battery so it pulls the battery voltage down during the cranking process uh, how far down is dependent on the strength of the battery but you can go down as low as i've seen as low as eight nine volts and anytime you lower the voltage you lower the output of an ignition module or the coil so by using the same battery to crank and run the ignition system the, by the way the battery is running the fuel pump it's running well i didn't have the fuel pump hooked up at the time but it's running the ignition coil it's running the ignition module it's running all the electrical items on the boat while it's cranking. And so um, I got to thinking, uh, wait a minute, what if I got the ignition system, get put 12 volts all the time on it, had a separate battery to run the ignition from the cranking battery. So crank it off one battery and run the ignition and everything else off a different battery. And so that's what I did. So um, I have this long jumper wire. It's a long topper wire with, uh, I've got, uh, Let's see if I can get it over here to you. So it's, it's got two alligator clips on either end, and I used this a long time ago on my brother's boat to diagnose problems, similar problem. And I just I'd keep it around. So um, anyway, so what I did was I ran jumper cables from my truck outside of this boat over into the boat, and uh, so here they are. They're still connected. And I, by the way, I can't let these two touch. Um, so I took the jumper wire, hooked it up to this positive. By the way, I'm using a red wire as a negative. Don't don't. Don't give me a hate for that. That's the only wire I had in stock. I mean, the only wire I had handy. And it's bolted here. And I didn't want to disturb the negative going to the back of the block. So I left those batteries there isolated, not hooked up. And I hooked my power. I moved the power from that battery to, to here. <laughs> Believe it or not, they got a black for the hot. You know, we got a red for the black, or a red for the uh, ground. But anyway, um, so I've got this battery grounded here. The hot, or the uh, positive is connected to that wire, which goes to a a battery on off switch right there those two batteries were in parallel so i had to disconnect the uh hots off both of them and so now or actually i got the ground disconnect off the back battery and the hot disconnect off the front battery <coughs> but um 
back to what I'm trying to say is um, so I've got this jumper wire and I put the jumper wire right here on the coil posi wire right there. One alligator clip was there, one other, one other alligator clip is on this positive terminal of the uh, jumper cables. And what that does is so the way the system works, you have 12 volts. Your, your original batteries were connected, are connected. And this, for example, this battery here is connected down on the starter, on the starter post. And then that feeds the entire boat electrical system through a, a 50 amp fuse down there. And uh, so it goes up here to the, to the starter solenoid, goes to all the electronics in here. It goes to this 50 amp circuit breaker uh, or whatever it is. is it? Yeah, it's 50. So it's 50 right there on it. So um, all the electrical is fed off this battery, the one right here beside me. And... Uh, the only thing keeping it from feeding the ignition, the fuel pump, and the ignition module is the ignition switch up there at the console. So power runs from the harness, continuous power runs from the harness through the boat harness up through there, all the way to the front, to the console, and it stops at your ignition switch. So the ignition switch is kind of an isolation between continuous power on the boat, or continuous power on the engine, and continuous power to the ignition, the ignition module, fuel pump, that kind of stuff. So in other words, that stuff stays off until you turn the ignition switch on. Well. If I hook up 12 volts there with this jumper, I'm now powering everything downstream of that ignition switch off a different battery, off a different source. And that's okay because that, that ignition switch is acting as a, as a barrier or buffer between the two batteries. So one battery's cranking and one battery's providing power to the ignition system. Now, when I make that jumper connection, um, for example, let me show what I did. I'm gonna do it again. So. If I jump or this, put, hit this alligator clip right here to this terminal, like that, that's done. As soon as I take this alligator clip and hook it to this positive battery terminal right here, or positive jumper cable, I've now powered up the ignition system. It's hot. It's ready to go. So I have to be, this is now my switch. When I make this connection from jump alligator clip to uh, to uh, jumper cable, that, that is the ignition switch. I've now turned on the ignition. I've now turned on the uh the ignition module, excuse me, I'm turning on the ignition coil, the, the ignition module, and also I would power up the fuel pump if it was uh, plugged up. So, um, well, that's not that's not true. I'll explain that later. But um, bottom line is I, I put the ignition system on the power from my truck battery and the cranking from the battery for this battery. And then, but then keeping that in mind, you cannot use the ignition switch on the console to start this motor because as soon as you turn it on, you will be providing power from this battery into the ignition and now you'll have two batteries powering the same system. It'll be paralleled. And that's not what I want to do. I want to keep them isolated. So as I've explained before, to do that, you don't use the ignition switch to start this engine. So what I did, I just took a, a screwdriver held right here. And as soon as I touch the screwdriver to both these terminals, it cranks the engine and it cranks it on the battery, it cranks it on this battery. It does not crank it off the truck and the truck system power stays isolated. So now I'm cranking on one battery and running the ignition and everything else or all the lower uh, electrical consuming devices on a different battery. My reason was that that would keep the ignition hot and get a hotter spark because I've got a full 12 volts for the ignition system all the time. And it seemed to work a little bit. Like I said, it worked. Uh, the engine started popping a little bit more than it was, or actually it wasn't popping at all before, it was just freewheeling. And then it started popping a little bit, and it, but it still wouldn't start up. And that's when I decided something's wrong. It's just something, this, this should start right now. And it's when, I, it's when it dawned on me, I just kind of went through the motions and said gas or fresh gas. And that's when I immediately realized, wait a minute, I don't know the condition is gas. It's not, maybe it's not fresh. And that's when I started thinking, okay, what's going on? Then I realized I put some bad gas in, or old gas in this tank uh, a couple of weeks ago. And I guess tainted what was in there. Um, so... Again, lesson learned, you got to be, all right, let me back up, you, you can't be stupid. You, you got to think through everything, cover every single basic. I mean, this cost me, having this bad gas cost me probably an hour of time fiddling around with the distributor, trying to check the timing, check my static timing again, which I knew was right because I remember doing it in the shop when I built this motor. Um, all kind of silly stuff. It was I was checking basics, but I, I didn't even go back and check the basic basic, which is good fuel. So um, having said that, um, I'm not gonna run this engine off the fuel in this gas tank in this boat. I'm gonna run it off what's in that tank right there, that red tank. And uh, by the way, this bilge is open. I'm not going I would not enclose this bilge. I don't have a lid on that can right there. So I'm fully aware of the dangers of gas fumes coming in here. And um, I'm not gonna close this bilge up. I'm gonna let it air, stay air out all the time. 
And a uh, matter of fact, I'm probably gonna go to lid for that gas tank too. Um, it's in my shop somewhere. But anyway, um, I've resolved this issue. Uh, I've got it fired up now. Um, if you'll go back to the main video from here, you'll see that I uh, finally have this engine running and ready to uh, put water on it, tune it up, run it for a while, get it get it warmed up, and uh, test all the systems out. Uh, also, got to put I got to hook the uh, the transmission linkages up, the uh, what do you call it, shift kill switch device over here, and also got to hook up my throttle cable. I don't do that until I get engines fully tuned and warmed up, or fully tuned and prepped, because I want to have access to this throttle from right here. I want to be able to move it and uh, adjust it and so forth. Um, right now, I've got this screw backed up to make it uh, run a little faster because I wanted to start up and stay running good. So I back, I turned that in to make it uh, push the throttles open a little bit and keep it running. So that's how I, uh, it's a little trick that I used to uh, overcome, I think, the weak Thunderbolt ignition system. And uh, I'll suggest if you are have a Thunderbolt ignition and you're trying to get it to crank and you're having similar problems, run your ignition on a separate battery and you might uh, it might help you out. Um, I think the reason this is, because this is a brand new motor, so it's very tight inside. The, the uh, rings and everything are uh, scraping on uh, new uh, cylinder walls that are still kind of rough, relatively speaking. And so it takes a lot of torque and uh, it, therefore current to turn a, a fresh engine over. And uh, so um, you're going to put more taxing on your battery and your, charting, your starting system. And therefore you're going to drop your battery voltage down a little bit more than you would. So everything helps to get as much voltage as you can on your Thunderbolt ignition module so it can deliver the hottest spark you can get. So uh, that's what I did. And uh, try if you, like I said, if you have a problem with your module, try this trick and maybe it'll help you. Um, if you enjoy my videos, please subscribe to my channel and also turn on your notifications uh, and uh, you'll get all my videos as I post them. Thanks for watching and uh, stay tuned for, uh, return back to the main video if you were watching that and came here first. Uh, otherwise, uh, hope you enjoy the video.